Here's what I believe based yeah. upon talking to multiple people who have some knowledge of what's going on. And people connected the Jets, as you said yesterday, they ain't saying anything specific about this. They are being very careful because they still have a fear this could all blow right. up in their faces. What I believe, what I currently believe, is that the Packers want first-round pick this year and something in 2025 if he plays in 2024. That's what I believe. Now, I don't know it, but that's the conclusion I've come to after right. spending a decent amount of time trying to find out what they want. I believe they want first-round pick plus protection in 25 in the event he plays in 24. And, uh, you know, is it fair? Seems like too much. Seems like too much for a guy for me. that isn't going to play for you anyway. Right, and yeah. only maybe going to play and one the, year. And Chris, the best solution would be, and maybe maybe we have to go through the draft. Maybe this is going to be something that hangs over us for the next five weeks. Oh, please six don't! Weeks. I think please it's six weeks don't now. do it to me, please. Well, and <laughs> and maybe and maybe we need to get to a point where it's twenty twenty four draft picks, not twenty three. And that draft pick is determined by what he does, just like Brett Favre. Yeah. Right? Somebody, somebody connected to all of this asked my opinion last night. Because every once in a while, people do ask my opinion. As crazy as that may sound, they do. And I said, dust off the Brett Favre trade. That's what's fair. The problem is the Brett Favre trade was done post-draft. So it was easy to say, we're going to do a four if this happens, a three if this happens, a two if this happens, a one if that happens, oh, and three first-round picks if you trade him back to someone in the NFC North. Before the draft in the season when the guy's going to play, you can't hinge the trade on, on what he does because you don't know what he's going to do. How about this? How about this? Here's an idea. And this is why I like talking things through because then I come up with things. Sometimes they make sense. Sometimes they're... Feckin' nutty. I, and there's that word again. And yes, we will, we will be saying feck or some variation thereof at least once a day every day for as long <laughs> as the show is on. And if we continue, that may not be much longer. How about this? Okay, Packers, we'll give you the first round pick. Okay? You want that first round pick, we'll give it to you. But, but we get something back from you next year right. if he doesn't play X percent. And if it's less than that, we get something more back. And if it's less than that, we get something more back. So basically, the reverse Brett Favre for 24, based upon what he does or doesn't do, as the balance to the first-round pick this year. What do you think of that? Well, I, I think there's there's some logic there to that. Right, yeah. Oh, or, or even if, like, you know, to, to your point, he's played one year. You know, he only plays one year. Yeah, we gave you a first round pick, but because it's only one year, now you got to trade us back a second or a third rounder or something of that. You know, if he plays two years, okay, maybe you don't have to trade us anything, or maybe it's a later mid round pick or something along with what you're talking about. We'll give you some compensation for 24. But yeah, a first round pick for this scenario for a guy that you know is not going to be your quarterback. Uh, and you got a quarterback in line that you drafted and you started this problem, you Green Bay. Let's just not forget that. That's this is them. They started this. That, you know, a first round pick is just it's too rich. It's too expensive. It's actually the more I sit here and talk about it and think about, you know, players in in, in the NFL right now and and throughout time where situations, yeah, up in their career and hey, we got a replacement already, and we're not, you know, everybody knows that we don't want you anymore, and it's time to move on. I mean, nobody ever holds people's feet to the fire in this conversation. This is, it's kind of rare. There, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, like a, a middle finger Jersey State bird right up you to Aaron Rodgers here. It really is, actually. The, the more and more I kind of unpack it in my own brain here and had a night to sleep on it, it is. And the more and more I sit here and talk about it, I, more and more I go, yeah, no, Green Bay, it's on you to get this done. It is. I know he's been a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you got to figure one out that's like, you know, logical. I know you got to run your business and you want to get the most you can out of it. But there's a point here where it does look dirty and scumbaggish a little bit with the way you treat the guy. I'm sorry for that phrase there. I didn't know why it came out of my mouth, but. Uh, yeah, they're they're doing him dirty here a little bit. There's no doubt about that. The more we talk about it and I think about it, 
The thing to remember, though, and this is one of the basic realities of the NFL, it is driven by deadlines, always. All, all big negotiations are driven by deadlines. When I practiced law and we would negotiate potential settlements of civil cases, deadlines drove the action. Nobody wants to go to their bottom line position prematurely because then between when you do and the actual deadline, you get squeezed off of it. Now, the most important thing is to have the two sides agree on when the deadline is. When is the deadline? When is the last possible moment they can do this? And I don't think they agree on when that is. And I think the sense is Jets just want to do it now. Packers say we can wait until the draft because we want 2023 draft pick compensation. So unless and until the Jets say, fine, we'll wait until the draft to do this, it's on them to move. If you want the deadline to be now, Jets, go ahead and give us what we want or something close to what we want or propose some solution that we find acceptable. Otherwise, we wait. It costs us nothing to wait. We're not going to have the pitchfork and torches cheese heads demanding that we do this. I really think that that's the key here. There is no one that matters to the Packers who is in a position to pressure the Packers to do anything. And in the absence of an owner who can say at any given moment, we just need to be done with this, the, the Packers, wrong as it may be, and as, as indicative as it may be, of not doing right by one of your all-time great players and the bad message it sends to your future great players. And really, Jordan Love is the guy who would be the most likely to look at this and say, man, they're going to do that to me in 15 years? Yeah. I don't think he cares about 15 years. No. I think it's a good problem to have if 15 years from now he caps an illustrious career with a clunky exit from Green Bay because that's what Aaron Rodgers witnessed, front row seat in 2008, a clunky, awkward exit by Brett Favre from Green Bay. They didn't do right by him. They manipulated Brett Favre, I believe. They preyed on Brett Favre, I believe. They knew that he was going to say, if they pressed him for an answer in February on whether he was going to play in 2008, fine, I'll retire. I think they specifically pressed him for that answer so he would say the magic word. And then they slammed the door and they barricaded it with furniture and hoped he wouldn't come back. And then when he did, they reluctantly... They, were, they didn't give him everything he wanted. They played hardball with him. What leverage did they have? They were going to pay him $12 million to sit his ass on the bench while Aaron Rodgers played. That wouldn't have been good for anybody. He's the one that caved then. He wanted to be traded to the Vikings, the Bears, or the Lions. He caved and said, fine, I'll play for the damn Jets. Now, this time around, the pressure is being put on the damn Jets, not on the quarterback. I think it's fascinating. And I guess my point is, why does Aaron Rodgers think they're going to treat him any differently than they treated Brett Favre. No, I, I hear you there. Well, you know, again, that's where Rodgers might have to continue to put more pressure on this situation. Uh, you know, that, that might be his, you know, his best card that he can play here, whether that's continue to go on Pat McAfee, other things like that. I don't know. Show up in the Green Bay area, go to your house there a little bit, make them think you may be coming into the facility. You know, I, I mean – you know, you, you, you said it right. First off, yeah, it's clunky. But, hey, that's the NFL, all right? I mean, there, there's, there's very few people in the history of the league that have had a separation from a team and it's gone gracefully, you know, into retirement. I mean, even the GOAT in New England, it got a little clunky at the end, right? You know, they kept it respectable and said all the right things, but it was clunky. It always goes that way. I mean, John Elway, you know, we're getting to like a numbered few people where – it, it, it's like you can look at it and go, well, it wasn't clunky. They walked off into the sunset the perfect way. I mean, even Peyton Manning, they were kind of trying to show him the door that year in Denver after, you know, when he won the Super Bowl. They took $4 million away. Exactly. They, uh, they took $4 million so, of his salary away no in doubt. last year in I mean, Denver. He made it all back when they won the Super Bowl. Right. Benched him for Brock Osweiler. So this is no, nothing new. But it's new in the fact that, yeah, it's rare that, again, like I said, you know, I don't, I'd love to come up with a list of scenarios like this of, like, players in football where we know the team doesn't want them anymore, right, and they get traded because, wait, the value's not there. Everybody knows they don't want them. And Green Bay is bucking the trend here and going, no, actually, we want more. We want more. And he's only going to maybe play a year for you. It actually doesn't make any sense. And that's where you're probably hearing that word unreasonable because when you put it out in that logic and – Again, I wish I would have prepared like some guys that were in that scenario before we did the show, but I'm not that smart always to think about those things beforehand. 
Uh, I I think it would actually show itself that it's, there aren't many. It's where yeah. where where would it be? Where would it be where there's been a guy who's played with a team for a really long time that the team absolutely positively no longer wants, but another team does, so they jack up the price yeah, exactly just because there's somebody else that wants exactly it because and, they can't. And there's a million instances of the other way we're we're talking about where yeah the team doesn't want him like you said he's old they have the replacement and we go wow. Team X is going to get that player for a fourth rounder? That's unbelievable, right? I mean, I, I feel like we say that five, six times you know, a year. Jalen Ramsey. I mean, there you go. Damn good player. We know they don't want him. Out the door. Third rounder. Like, there it is. There's a million instances like that. Hey, and we don't want to do you dirty here and hold you hostage. You did great for us. Helped us win a Super Bowl. So that's where it does look bad on Green Bay. And I do think if Rodgers, you know – can do this the right way and be tactful and th thoughtful and not petty about it in any way, he might be able to turn the, the tides of the pressure and the talking points and the fan base a little bit here into his favor to where we're all again going like we were three years ago. Green Bay, what the hell are you doing? What did you think was going to happen when you drafted Jordan Love? It could be that conversation if he does this the right way. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.